William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. The trouble with leading a life of crime is that you could never rest on your laurels. What you usually wind up resting on is a prison cot. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. Have you ever tried reading Confidential Investigator backwards? It can be done if it's on a glass door you're sitting behind, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Me, it left sitting in my office on Madison Avenue around closing time with nothing to do but wait till I got hungry enough for dinner. Anyway, that's what I thought. Come in. Until they and it arrive. All right, take it easy, fellas. Take it real easy. That's it. No, no, no. Put it down. Easy. Yeah, yeah that's it, fellas. Yeah. Now, wait downstairs till I get this guy's signature. Huh? Uh, there we are. Look, okay, uh, Mr. Right on this line. Well, wait a minute. Uh, what is it? What's what? That thing you just dumped in here. Looks like a tree in brown wrapping paper. Maybe it's a tree. Maybe it's a hitching post. How do I know? It's not a tree. There are no branches, but... Uh, a hitching post. A hitching post is something you hitch horses to. I don't hitch horses to anything. I haven't got horses. So now you got a hitching post, maybe you'll get some. There's a clause in my lease that says I can't keep horses in this office. Move. There's another clause which says... Oh, forget it. Will you please sign this here? Get the wrappings off that thing first. Okay. Hey, don't look now, but... Were you wrong? This here came addressed to Barry Craig. That's you? That's me. But uh, that's not a hitching post. Who cares? It happens to be a mummy. Lay off the baby talk. Mummy, as in embalmed. Okay, okay. So now you won't have to buy a horse. I wasn't planning on... You won't even have to move. But what could I use a mummy for? A hat rack? (laughs) No knobs. So give it away for Christmas. Mister, would you please sign us? Who sent it to me? Mister, I- I'm just a trucker. Nobody tells me the little secrets. You don't want to sign? How hard is it to forge an X? Goodbye. Hey, come back here. He didn't come back. By the time I got to the door, he was gone. I wandered back into the office and stared at the mummy. For all I could tell, the mummy was maybe staring back at me. I don't think either of us got much pleasure out of it. That was when the girl walked in. Staring at her was much more fun. Hello. Hello. You are Barry Craig? I am. I am the Princess Nepartiti. How do you do? I am coming for my sister. I don't think there that you... There she are. There? Princess, that happens to be a mummy. She are my sister. But isn't she a bit older than you are? Say, 5,000 years older? It's nothing. A long time between drinks. I am 5,000 years old. Well, I, I don't believe it. You like I prove it? Sure. I'm telling you something what happened a long time ago to prove it. What you like to hear? Well, uh, is it true what they say about Antony and Cleopatra? Ah, it's true. Sit down. Okay. I are sitting too. On me? You are Mark Antony. I are Cleopatra. He's over there, denial. It's beautiful music playing. Yeah. It's very nice weather. Well, I'm glad the weather's nice. Cleopatra. She makes this with the lips. Hmm. Nice and warm. Uh, I, I meant the weather. Look, uh, Cleopatra, Stop somebody just... Stop jumping. It's uh, only the beginning. Uh, next installment ought to be something. Jake. Uh, uh, th- this is the Princess Nefertiti. She came to get her sister. Uh, yep. She was just showing me how things were between Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Uh, yep. I do not like him. Oh, this is Jake, the night elevator man. On the Nile, there are not being elevator man. I go now. Oh, uh, but, Princess... You are lousing up the history. 
See what you did, Jake? Loused up the history. You in a hurry? Yeah. Why didn't I take the elevator down then? I won't. Oh, but Jake, I owe you a dinner. Yep. Come on, I'll buy you one. After I find out where an Egyptian princess, 5,000 years old, goes when she goes home. She wasn't, of course, a princess, Egyptian or otherwise. And she was a lot less than 5,000 years old. I didn't have to deduce that. She'd sat on my lap, remember? But I wanted to know why she'd put on the act and where the mummy came in. Must have had cars in old Egypt, eh? Yeah, it looks that way. She drives well. How's her cooking? Ah, hey, I didn't notice. Uh, Jake, behave yourself. Remember, she's old enough to be even your grandmother. Well, you think of that one? Uh... Uh, that's enough. She's stopping. Right in front of a big tomb. Yeah, inscription over the entrance, yeah. Egyptological Museum. She's gone into the grounds, cutting around the building. Ah, here's a cement path. There must be an annex to the museum. Uh-huh, yeah. there's a small house over there. Went inside. We following her in? I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. We'll try the museum first. They're rather far. Jake, the museum might be more interesting. Huh? Well, all right, but... Uh, this door might do it. Yes, somebody was careless. Leaving doors open. Just as well. Place is filled with Egyptian relics. And Egyptians. Mummy cases all around. Now, well, let's try this one. Mummy case and mummy inside. Who'd you expect? Daddy? <laughs> well, uh, another one. Uh, another case, another mummy. It's liable to go on like that. Maybe. I'm not so sure, though. Now, let's take a look at this. Yep. I... Mummy's moving, Mr. Gray. Moved? Fell out. And not a mummy. What is it? A man who was alive only a little while ago. He'd still be alive if somebody hadn't buried a knife in his chest. There was no knife around, proving pretty definitely the man in the mummy case had been murdered. Suicides rarely dispose of their weapons after death. He'd been murdered and stuffed into a mummy case. Nice place to hide a corpse if you like hiding corpses. He had papers on him. Alive, he'd been a wealthy man named Osgood. I remembered the name. He'd financed archaeologists all over the world. Dead, he was just a man to whom nothing mattered. Jake, unless I'm wrong, this museum was one of Osgood's endowments, which makes it a more or less natural place for him to wind up dead. Makes it a natural place for us to get out of. Whoever killed him took the mummy out of that case and put Osgood inside. And then, maybe shipped that mummy to me. Why? I don't know. Here, give me a hand. Yeah. Uh, what? Well, I want to get him back inside the mummy case. There. He's back. Yeah. Body temperature... The fact that rigor's only starting to set in indicates he died around six hours ago. No hurry about informing the police. Let's talk to the princess about it instead. She knows the mummy out of that case is in my office. It's possible she knows more than that. From what I've seen when I come into your office, she knows more than that. Think she's a real princess? No, but she's real. Uh, that's the annex uh, curator's house, I guess. Windows open. I don't know how it would go with your Vermont upbringing, but uh, we're going to do some eavesdropping. Favorite winter spot up in Vermont. Shh. Three people in the room. Girl, little mouse of a man, and something that could be a football player. Ted, don't be an idiot. 
football player's name is Ted. I'm not an idiot, I tell you. I had an appointment with Mr. Osgood here. But Lester... Lester! Mr. Osgood hasn't been here, Ted. Believe me, not for days. Listen, Lester. Mr. Osgood told me to meet him here this evening, hours ago. Now, where is he? He couldn't have asked you to meet him here. Are you calling me a liar? Oh, oh dear, no. No, but for I... heaven's sake, Lester, stop crawling. Try to act like a man or something. I... I'm sorry, Wendy. The prince's name is Wendy, it seems, and the mouse is Lester. I want to know why you're so sure he didn't ask me to meet him here, Lester. We... we quarreled violently. You quarreled with Mr. Osgood? You? He wanted me to put those Indonesian masks in the museum. They were fakes, and I told him so. Good for you, darling. There is something you'll fight for. Maybe it escaped your notice that Mr. Osgood owns the museum. He doesn't own me. Well, I I'm only his secretary. I take orders from him. The last orders I got were to meet him here. Let's try the front door now, Jake. Yep. Not a fascinating conversation we overheard, but uh, considering the corpse in the museum, it might be important. Yes? May we come in, Mr. Lester? Well, I suppose so, although... Do I know you? My name's Barry Craig. This is Jake, and uh, we are coming in. This um, seems to be a Mr. Craig, and... Uh, you'd be Ted. I am. And you, of course, are uh, Hello. not exactly a princess. You've been eavesdropping. Uh, you've been accent dropping. <laughs> it's true. Happens to us Egyptians all the time. Well, now, what's going on here? Ted talks like that because he's more or less my fiancé. We don't want to intrude, but would the three of you mind coming to the museum? Oh, but, it, but it's closed at this time. The regular hours Master, are... Beca don't be such a stick. Forget the regular hours and the regular rules. And Girl the reg loves mouse. But is engaged to football player. I think you're right. Well, all right, but I don't know what Mr. Osgood would say. I don't think you have to worry about that. I had inside information on that. From inside a mummy case. Now, let's see. Yeah, this one right here. Well, this, this mummy case? Yes, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Open it, Lester. No. Why shouldn't he open it, Wendy? Because, because there's blood on the floor. Girl's right. Since when have mummies started bleeding? They don't. Open the case, Lester. Very well. It's a trick. It won't prove anything. Anyone could have stabbed him. Stabbed who? I don't know. Whoever's in there, Lester. My dear, in spite of the fact that I've never before dared to mention it, I... I happen to love you very much. But that doesn't blind me to the fact that you're frequently a fool. Now, shut up. Don't talk that way to Wendy. Are you objecting to my telling her I love her or that she's a fool? I object to both. But she is a fool. Otherwise, she'd realize the only reason you're marrying her is the money she expects to get from Mr. Osgood. Do you? You're a worm. I probably am. I hate to interrupt all this good, clean fun, but you still haven't opened the case, Lester. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll do it at once. Mr. Osgood. He, he's dead, isn't he? He's dead. Wendy, how, how did you know Osgood was going to be inside that case? I, I suspected it because he had an appointment with you and didn't keep it. And, and he'd had a violent quarrel with me some days ago. I'm afraid your deductions were the obvious ones, Wendy. But did you have to be quite so sure they were true? The police ought to be informed. Oh, yes, yeah, I'll, I'll phone them. I can't believe all this is real. It's real? Real as the blood on the floor. The police came, saw, and went. But before they went, they arrested Mr. Lester. So he went with them. Jake and I returned to my office. I thought perhaps the mummy might be getting lonely. That didn't turn out to be the case. took those pot shots at us is gone. And so is the mummy. I made a phone call. I wanted to make sure Lester was still in jail. That would clear him of shooting at Jake and me and swiping the mummy. Lester, I discovered, was no longer in jail. The district attorney hadn't admired the evidence against him. 
Well, that means Lester's loose, Wendy's loose, and Ted's loose. Well, what's that loose talk? Jake, please. Uh, I was tempted, Mr. Craig. We're going back to the museum. I thought so. Worried about the mummy? Worried about... I mean, I'm worried about the person who stole the mummy, and I'm even more worried about why. I had an idea why. I didn't linger with it. I was pretty sure I'd never get fond of it. I hoped I'd turn out to be wrong about it. Well, the museum's dark. So is the curator's house. Yep. So we'll go to the museum first. Figures? How? Oh. Don't hit below the belt. Sorry. I want to check that empty mummy case. What for? Make sure it's empty. Uh-huh. Empty mummy case is always empty. Except when it isn't. Taint? Taint. The mummy's back inside. That good? That's bad. Wrong mummy? Wrong something. I'm not sure what. House is still dark. We'll change that. Thinking about the little fella? Lester? Yeah. What? He's in this up to his neck. Now, where's that doorbell? Hmm. Could be asleep. You'll have to wake up. He ain't waking up. We won't wait for him, then. Door's locked and solid. We'd better try the windows. One of the living room we looked through before. It's around the side here. It was ground level, which ought to help. Yeah. <laughs> Fastened down. Get out of the way, Jake. Yep. That sounded loud enough to wake the dead. It may have to. Now, most of the glass is out of the way. Now we go in. The light's someplace around. Living room's empty. Where would Lester's bedroom be? I don't know. It's a funny smell. You're right. That's gas, which means the kitchen. The smell's getting stronger. The other end of this hallway, which should be the kitchen door. Stay away from that switch. Uh, huh? Any spark might cause the gas inside the kitchen to blow up. Door's open. Jake, get to a phone. Call the nearest hospital. You'd better see what's in the kitchen first. All right. Here goes. Oh, oh, oh. It's, it's real bad. It's hard to <coughs> see in here. Oh, we got to find him. <coughs> Somebody's laying down <coughs> near the rain. Yeah, I got him. Let me help you. You better... The gas is strong. You got, got his feet? All right. Outside. The hallway. It's all, almost <clears throat> as bad out here. In the, the living room. A broken window there would help. Yep. Uh, oh, it's a lot better in here. Uh, we put him down near the window. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. He don't look so good. He's still alive, though. Get on that phone. We need an ambulance fast to get to him before death does. They got to him and took him away. The intern said he had a chance. Jake and I stayed behind in the house. I made a few phone calls, and the air got better. Mr. Craig, was he trying to kill himself? No. There was a bruise on the back of his head. Well, then it was the same one who killed Osgood. Yeah. Hope to close the case by making it look as though Lester had committed suicide because of guilt. Uh-oh. Company. Oh, dear Craig, I don't like being dragged down here in the middle of the night. You want Osgood's murderer caught? Well, sure, but... There's a peculiar odor. Where's Lester? Out for the moment. And that ought to be Wendy. I phoned her, too. Mr. Craig and Ted. What are you... Well, apparently they're... 
pleading up Osgood's murder, Wendy. I suppose they needed us here for something or other. But I thought the police decided it was last year. Would... They didn't like the evidence too much, and they turned him loose. Where is he? The Samaritan Hospital. Condition critical. Jake and I found him in the kitchen, breathing gas. He tried to kill himself. You'd like that? I... I... It would close the case. Final proof against Lester. The only thing, Wendy... You knew about Osgood's death before you should have. You warned Lester not to open the mummy case in the museum. But that was because there was blood on the floor. You didn't explain how you knew he was stabbed, not shot. Oh, Wendy, they're right. I remember it explained to them. I can't. But that could mean... Wendy... Oh, shut up, Ted. You never cared about me anyway. All you wanted was the money. I didn't hear it from Osgood. Well, it's likely to be bloodstained now. I don't care for any of it, I think. Is there anything more, Craig? Oh, one thing. This statuette. Uh, what's it made of? What? Granite. Then it should be hard enough. <laughs> don't you like Ted? No. He's a murderer. <laughs> murderer who'd been fingering the gun in his pocket while I talked. Being hit over the head by the statuette wouldn't damage him permanently. The state would take care of that. Girl was in a real hurry to get to the hospital. Yeah, I know. So what can she see in a mouse like Lester? Catnip. <laughs> no argument. Jake Ted's motive was the money Wendy was getting from Osgood. He killed Osgood shortly after Osgood had quarreled with Lester. He figured Lester would be the obvious suspect. Anybody ask you to explain? No, no. Now, uh, why was the mummy delivered to me? Simple. Ted wouldn't have. He'd framed Lester and would have left things the way he'd set them up. So it had to be Lester himself. He wanted me to help him. He gained a little time. That you said nobody asked? You? Nobody did, but I'm telling you now... Now, Wendy had seen Lester, so she came to my office to try to get the mummy back. Prove she was innocent. But if nobody asks you, why are you explaining? I'm not. I'm just dropping you off at the building. Oh. Well, thanks. I got one question. What's that? Is it true what they say about Anthony and Cleopatra? <laughs> You've been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Never Murder a Mummy, was written by Louis Vitis. It's the strange story, Butlers Can Be Innocent, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Butlers can be innocent. Maybe this is a little hard to believe, but the butler in question proves it the hard way. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, directed by Andrew C. Love. Our cast included Jonathan Hole, Libby Janis, Jim Nusser, Henry Hunter, and Howard Culver. Groucho Marx for You Bet Your Life tonight on the NBC Radio Network.